The legend has been reborn, introducing the new Hoyo de Monterey. At Hoyo, they're about craft. From sea to soil to sunshine and rain, they obsess over their labors. With skillful hands and passionate souls, they create. They do not settle. They do not concede. They are Hoyo de Monterey, and this is their craft. Experience the uniquely handcrafted Hoyo de Monterey at HoyoCigars.com. Paying homage to the mecca of tobacco, Pinar del Rio, Cuba, Abe Flores opened his PDR cigar factory in the Dominican Republic over 10 years ago. Abe is one of the hottest boutique cigar makers in the industry today, earning the number 10 spot on Cigar Aficionado's Top 25 Cigars of 2014 with the Abe Flores 1975 Siri Pravada. Abe and his team use Cuban blending traditions in a modern boutique Dominican factory. Smoke PDR cigars and cut light and taste what they love to do. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Brought to you by Rocky Patel Premium Cigars, the Tabacero by Hamlet Paredes, developed and blended by Cuban master of tobacco, Hamlet Paredes. This cigar is an exciting addition to the Patel family, featuring traditional and rare sizes hand-picked by Hamlet himself. Smoke Tabacero by Hamlet Paredes today. For more information, visit them on the web at RockyPatel.com and be sure to follow Rocky Patel Premium Cigars on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Welcome back, everyone, to the Stogie Geek Show. This is our Stogies of the Week segment. we got a lot of fabulous smokes to talk about. Well, I'm going to kick us off about a cigar that a cigar line actually that I'm really excited about. This is the Griffin's Nicaragua. I smoked the Short Torpedo and the Robusto. I and like I can't figure out which one that I like more. Uh, I smoked one of each of those sizes, and um, where did you get them? Where did you get them? I got these at Mr. J's Havana Smoke Shop. Okay, I didn't see. I haven't. Seen I have some yet. for you that I will be sending to you probably oh, tomorrow. I will awesome. send out your package. Awesome. Uh, I got a Kristoff uh, 2008 Salomon to send you. These two Nicaraguans, and probably something else wow. to send you, because uh, I want you to smoke these. Um, they were both excellent, smooth, nice balance of earth, spice, and pepper notes. With a little more time, I think these are going to be even better. This was a box split for me. I can see this being box worthy. Um, because they're just awesome. It's <clears throat> a great representation of the Nicaraguan tobacco. Um, it's not as much like in your face as a lot of Nicaraguan tobacco can be. It's very much a dialed back Nicaraguan, which I just find to be awesome. It's like a perfect medium body. I smoked one of these in the morning and I wasn't like overwhelmed with like strength and pepper and spice and all that stuff. Um, Awesome, awesome cigar. Really, really dig it. It really kind of wowed me, uh, actually, because I hadn't smoked a Griffin in some time. Their regular line tends to be very, very light, almost too light for me. Their special editions are just epic. Yeah. Um, and in this Nicaraguan, I tell you what, I, 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 right now it's kind of flying on the radar, Will. I don't see a lot of people talking about it. No, and Griffin's is a line that just flies under the radar mm -hmm. to begin with. Um, it's a, it's more of a, of a European uh, brand, but it yep. is in the U.S. They launched this Nicaragua actually at the um, Inner Tobacco in Europe last year, and it just came over recently. Um, and I'm, I'm this is a cigar I really am curious to see what they did with it. I I yeah, I'm impressed, dude. I really am. I, I'm impressed. I don't. Even, what's the blend? I didn't get the blend information in there. Well, it's not. It's not a puro. Uh, it uses a Nicaraguan Habano wrapper. It's a Dominican Peloto uh, Cubano binder, and then the filler is a combination of Nicaraguan, Honduran, and Dominican. So it's the wrapper, obviously. It's and, but you don't see a lot of Nicaraguan tobacco in Griffin's blend. No. They did. They did a really nice job with this blend. In fact, Brenda from next door at the Havana Cigar Club. Uh, I, I let her try one, and she was just, she really, like, she's digging it. She's digging What's, it. And, and you say it's like, a, is it about a medium? Is it's that, a medium. It's a solid medium, man. Yeah, you know, for the most part, I find the Griffins dial back, and then occasionally they'll throw in a zinger. Like, mm -hmm. there's a couple of those limiteds that, are, that, are, that have some punch to it. Yes. But for the most part, they are dialed back. Yeah. So, if you can find this one, uh, I, go for it. 
go for it. Yeah, it looks like a, I, I love the uh, the darker Griffin's band they used on that as well. They, they, just all around size and packaging. I haven't tried the other sizes other than those two, um, <clears throat> but I was really impressed. So yeah, now you know you got Davidoff's Nicaragua, you got Avo's Nicaragua, and now you got Griffin's Nicaragua, all under the Davidoff umbrella. Yep. And they're doing a nice job with these Nicaragua kind of branded lines. Yeah, you know, in fact, uh, the box presses from Davidoff are about to hit the stores, and a couple of guys in uh, my local shop have smoked them, and they were raving about it. Nice. Yeah. Back to you, Will. Speaking of a cigar that really threw, uh, flew under the radar, um, this is one from E.P. Carrillo. Um, it's called the Selection Oscuro. Now, this one was a cigar that was released at the trade show last year, and it is an Oscuro. It's a dark wrapper cigar, and it kind of follows the packaging that E.P. Carrillo started doing with that uh, New Wave Connecticut Reserver and that cabinet. So it's yes. kind of a cigar along those same lines. Um, it's a San Andreas Oscuro wrapper with an Ecuadorian binder and a Nicaraguan filler. I smoked the Toro size, which was a... 6x52, um, known as, the, it's called the Especial Number 6. Um, I like this cigar a lot. Um, it had an earthy component. It had a, a little bit of cocoa. It had that wood-cedar combination. Um, what I liked about this cigar is it was one of those San Andreas cigars where the San Andreas wrapper didn't overpower the rest of the blend. Um it flavor wise, it, it flavor wise, you know, it does, it will taste like a San Andreas, but again, you know, and I noticed with the La Historia, which is their other San Andreas, which I do like, but that one you're gonna get a lot more of the wrapper on that one than on this one. Um, cigar was eight bucks for a Toro size, very hmm. very reasonable. Nice. Um, I don't hear this cigar getting talked a lot about by E. P. Carrillo, and it's just it, it's a it's a good cigar. It's it's presented very nicely. It's that San Andreas wrapper, by the way, is really, really smooth for a wrap. It's not one of those rugged ones. Um, this is a box split cigar. You nice. know, I think, I, I think the last year Ernie's really kind of stepped it back up again. I think his releases are getting getting better. I, I agree. A little bit of a slump for a while, but yeah, do very nice work. I agree. I smoked an Asylum Insidious Robusto. Awesome, sweet flavors. Very well balanced. Um, it had, I thought, a lot more flavor and some more strength than it did in the Churchill offering, uh, making this a winner in my book. Dude, this is like, this is an awesome Connecticut cigar. And I was amazed as to how different it was from the Churchill that I reviewed when this cigar first hit the market. I was like, yeah, the Churchill was good. I'm like, it was really, really mild. This Robusto really packed in those flavors and amped up the strength just a little bit, like just enough, and balanced in a lot of those wood notes and sweetness notes. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was a winner in my book. I, 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 I love the cigar. I, I called it box worthy. Interesting. And that Churchill didn't rate as high for me. No. No. What? That's interesting. But um, I, would, I, would, I, would, I would buy a box of these Robustos and, and smoke them in the morning. And I've heard mixed reviews depending on the size that you smoke in this line. You know, for the price of that cigar, it's a really good cigar. And if you're smoking those Baccarats, this cigar is equal. And that's a, Baccarat's a really good cigar. This cigar is equally as good. Yeah, and this has the sweet cap, right, like the Baccarats do? Yep. And uh, it, it's not a, the, the Baccarat has a really overpowering sweet cap on it. Like, it's really sweet. Like yeah. they, they pack a lot of sweetness kinda, in that tip. It has, a resi- it has a residual effect. Yeah. This one I is just, more, it's more subtle. Uh, and I in, encourage you to try it in the Robusto. If you've tried it in other sizes, try it in this Robusto because it really, really uh, impressed me. And, and this was the Connecticut you smoked, right? Yeah. Because they have a Maduro and now they have a Habano. I have oh, interesting. Smoked- I've not smoked the Habano yet, but this is a cigar. I mean, I do give to it. I, I will give to like a very new cigar smoker. Like I've given these yes. to my son, my yes. son, um, or someone who doesn't smoke as much. But I'll tell you what, it's a cigar I would light up as well. There's no reason <laughs> right. why. Uh, well, uh, and I, I think the name is misleading, right? 
when you call a cigar insidious, you think it's going to be a really like strong, overpowering cigar. That's not the cigar. It's it's yeah. kind of weird. Yeah. No, I agree, but it's a solid cigar. Back to you, Will. Okay. Um, I um, I actually smoked this cigar. Um, this was given to me by uh, my friend Mike, um, and he was up in Connecticut a few weeks ago at a cigar store called Up in Smoke. And uh, it's located in Cromwell, Connecticut, which is, I think it's in, I want to say it's in the Hartford area. Okay. Um, they have a line of cigars um, that he was very interested in, um, in, and he thought enough to share it with me. And this cigar is called the Cigar of the Gods. Okay. Well, it's got and- a big reputation to live up to. Yeah, that's the, that's the brand name, Cigar of the Gods. <coughs> the the name of the cigar is the Adonis, and this is the Adonis Natural Gorgon. So that's that's say that that Cigar wow. of the Gods Adonis Natural Gorgon. Uh, it's a Connecticut shade cigar, um, and it's a really nice looking cigar. It's uh, I'll have a picture up on the Stogie feed of it. Um, this Gorgon was a 7x48 uh, Churchill. Um, and I had, one reason why I actually went back and smoked these this week is it is a milder cigar. Um, I had smoked this before, but it was a milder cigar, and I was trying to reset my, um, my palate after mm. being sick. You know, you can't start well, – well, I'll talk about that a little later. when I did hit a, a very heavy cigar. Mm. Uh, but this is – it's a classic Connecticut cigar. Um, Ecuadorian Connecticut, um, you know, wrapper, uh, Connecticut broadleaf binder, and um, it's got Honduran filler in it. Um, but it's a, it's a classic Connecticut. It's got um, it's a cream, a lot of woody notes in the second half of the cigar. It builds up more of a cedar type of woody note as opposed to more of a generic wood note. There's an underlying black pepper, which is real, real subtle. I mean, it's just just enough to to, to satisfy the palate. Again, it's a, a cigar that's on the milder side. It's a mild strength cigar, mild to medium in body. Um, the, the cigars go for um, um, they go for one hundred and sixty dollars for a box of twenty five. So again, you're, you're looking at something a little like a little over um, a little over six dollars. Um, I thought it was a solid cigar. It's a, it was worthy of a fiver in my book. Um, it's a nice Connecticut. Nice. So, up in New England, it up in smoke. I check out. They have some other lines to a Maduro and stuff, but again, a great mild cigar. Something I something I give to a beginner as well. I smoked the uh, Vivolo Siri Exclusivo Lonsdale. Yep. Um, this was a great stick. Nice flavors. What I liked about this cigar is from start to finish, it delivered. You know, like it didn't stand out to me as being like extraordinary at any point in time, but it delivered in the flavor department. It was nice and smooth. Um, and I smoked it right down, <coughs> excuse me, right down to the nub. <coughs> in fact, <coughs> I attended an event this week and, um, I started smoking the cigar in the office <coughs> and it was so good. I took it with me in the very short five minute car ride over that I took to the event and I finished smoking in the beginning of the event, and I just didn't want to put it down. It was that good. Hold your attention. This is a fiver all day long, and uh, I encourage you to you know pick up one and see what, and see what you think of it. Um, but for me, it was definitely a fiver. Not to take away from the cigar, but the event was awesome, by the way. I went to an event um, with Dan Welsh. Did I say that right? Dan Welsh. Dan Welsh. New Dan, Havana. New Havana, Havana. New Havana Cigars in L'Atelier. Well, <laughs> this event, I, I did I tell you I didn't tell you about this event really. I knew I knew you were going. Well, I did, you were... I, the logistics for this event were just unbelievable. It was twenty five dollars a ticket, right? So that included food, that included a raffle. You got a seventh Kappa Especial from Tatawahe. Oh wow! With the um, it's a sun sungrown Ecuadorian sungrown wrapper on that. That's a Sumatra. I thought it was a Sumatra. Sumatra. Sumatra yeah. sun-grown sun Sumatra wrapper, right? Or, Equ- I'm sorry, Ecuadorian Sumatra. It's a Sumatra, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then you got a Tatawahe black label from the jaw release as your oh, second nice. cigar. 
Then you got a coffin of the El Triumphador with the El Triumphador Lancero and the Culebra. Really? For, for 25, 25 bucks. Really? You got a ton of cigars. If you bought a box, you get that Tatawahe Robusto three-pack thing. Um, it's just an awesome event. Dan's a great guy. We, uh, I got a chance to, to meet Dan and talk with Dan. <clears throat> I want to bring Dan on the show. Dan's very passionate about what we've been talking about uh, in the past year or so, how much size matters, how much the different brands matter underneath any given manufacturer, and how some people are very quick to dismiss an entire manufacturer's line or multiple lines based on smoking just one cigar and one size. And he really latched on to that idea as well. I mean, he's always been a big proponent of the line sampler. In fact, that's how he started. New Havana Cigars was offering line samplers. Um, so uh, it was really it was a cool event. It's a good event. Yeah, you know, I could see that with Dan because um, on L'Atelier, Dan's baby is that surrogate's line. Um, so, you know, the Animal Cracker, the Satin Glove, <laughs> and... Dan has really blended from what I've, and I haven't met Dan, but I've read a lot about this stuff. Dan's blended to the sizes with yes. that particular, uh, with those particular cigars. So, you know, you don't see a, a, a lot of Vitolas in a blend. You know, there's a couple, but they're blended specifically for the size there. So he does kind of fit in with that Stogie Geeks mantra. Um, <clears throat> do we have the Unbanded Cigar? Mark, did I give, I gave that one to you, right? There was a picture that we had of our unbanded cigar. This is unbanded cigar 106. There it is. Look yeah. at that. That's unbanded 106. Will this is a robusto cigar? I would say it's a you know a five by fifty, five by forty nine, robusto. Somewhere in there. I had a, I thought it was a little bigger, maybe five by fifty-two, but it's in there. Okay, five and a quarter, maybe inches. It was. <clears throat> I didn't measure it. I didn't either. We should we should probably start doing that. Um, yeah, but it was a robusto. It, it was a. Robusto. <laughs> it was a robusto. Um, it was a beautiful looking cigar. Had a nice wrapper on it, and um, I thought the flavors were really good. I smoked two of them actually, blind, and uh, the first third is some wonderful like wood notes, very kind of light. I thought in the first third had that like light kind of woody notes to it, yep. a little bit of cedar, um, yep. but that like crisp flavor that I really enjoy in a cigar. And that was one of the things that I think I liked most was that first third um, because it had those really light airy cedar notes. Um, the second two thirds were were good. A lot of the same same flavors and notes as you got in the first third. A little deeper and a little richer in the second two thirds. You know, I, I think as it burned a little hotter. Um, you got a little bit of a change up in that it got a little earthier in the second two thirds. Both cigars I smoked were very, very good. Um, I think this is <clears throat> probably a box split in my opinion. I think it's a very versatile cigar. You can smoke earlier in the day, later at night, had a great flavor profile. Um, what did you think of cigar, Will? Yeah, I agree that, um, especially on the woody part of it, um, uh, there was a sweetness that I got early on that eventually it became more of a, I couldn't quite pinpoint what that sweetness was. Um, but it was yep. on top, it was kind of, uh, it was underlying the wood notes. And then it kind of moved more into a classic cedar note. And then the woody notes kind of morphed more into an earthy note, like you said, in the second half. I, I definitely had it, um, you know, I definitely thought it increased in both strength and body as the cigar went, went along. So I think we're really in sync with that. You know, it, I kept thinking Kristoff with that cigar. Really? I kept thinking Kristoff because of the way it started off. But then by the middle, it didn't taste like a Kristoff. But some of those, it was that Kristoff Woody note that I get sometimes. Off Interesting. Something. See, yeah. I thought this was an Illusion Epernay. Really? That's what I thought it was. It smoked to me like an Illusion Epernay. It looked to me like an Illusion Epernay. <clears throat> I, I think it has a... I don't think it has Honduran in it. I could be wrong. I thought this was a Nicaraguan Dominican mixed uh, cigar with a Habana wrapper on it. Now you really got me thinking because of that sweetness. I think it was. I thought it was an Epernay all day long. I thought when I looked at it, it was an Epernay. I thought when I smoked it, it smoked like an Epernay. I am holding the envelope in my hand 
This week we're doing it with the env- envelope style. And this has we need, what we need, we need. We need Ed McMahon here. Yeah, we do. We need Ed McMahon, Ed McMahon. and we need we need a drum roll, please, for the unbanded 106 Robusto cigar. What's your rating on this cigar, Will? Box split. Yeah, I would go with box split. Box split. Oh, you're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna be surprised at this one. This was an Elway Wednesday. Robusto. Get out of here. It was. Yes, it was. Here are the bands right there. Wow. This is a away Wednesday from Nick. Well, that's good. I, I'm, seemed, I'm, yeah. I'm, I haven't smoked enough of the Robusto with that one. Now. I hadn't either. I hadn't either in that blend. That's, but, yeah. That was good. That tricked us. That tricked us. We were both I, kind of off on that, what it yeah. was. It is, yeah. But it is Nicaragua. I mean, is it a Nicaraguan Puro? Um, that's a Nicaraguan Puro. A Nicaraguan Puro. I mean, I did, the Epernay, the sweetness, you had me thinking a minute. Yeah. Maybe it was. Um, it just seemed like it was too strong for an Epine. That was the only reason why I said no. But wow. I'm Elway glad was- I'm glad we rated it well. Blind, we smoked Nick's cigar blind and we rated it well. So Yeah. Good. We're good, both good. on point. That was a good uh, good job, Brenda and Keith. Yeah, very good job. Picking our unbanded. That was good. Yeah. That stumped us. Yeah. But I can see it now. Now I can see now, it. Now and now it makes total sense, right? Because I've smoked a lot of it in the Churchill. In that I, blend. Yeah. I just, like I said, the Robusto is probably the one size I haven't smoked a lot of, of that one. Good call. Good call. Yeah. All right. What else you got, Will? Um, smoked a cigar from uh, our friends at Espinosa Cigars. This is in the 601 family. Um, this is called the 601 Pennsylvania <laughs> edition. Um, this was a cigar that actually I got from uh, a online retailer called bestcigarprices.com that Eric's made this cigar for. Um, what, I've, what I've noticed about what Eric Espinosa, when he does a lot of these one-offs, he tends to give very good quality cigars uh, blends out. He doesn't tend to just kind of, if he's got some blend on the side, it doesn't seem like he throws it to them. Uh, this was no exception. This was a really good cigar. Um, Habano Oscuro wrapper. Um, and then the Pennsylvania components in the filler is a Pennsylvania broadleaf uh, in the filler along with some Nicaraguan. Um, what I liked about this cigar is sometimes Pennsylvania tobacco, it, it's hit or miss with me. Mm. I, I either like it or I don't. Um, and sometimes when I don't, it has a very, it has a, a metallic taste to it. Um, <clears throat> yeah. It, it, this one has yeah, a it almost has like an unbalanced kind of taste to it yeah like one dimensional and i don't want to say harsh because it's not harsh no it, it's yeah. very distinct it's very distinct now you'll pick up the pennsylvania tobacco in here um it's like more of a mineral component you'll get yeah from which i like because it was balanced off with some other flavors there was a nice uh citrus kind of almost like a lemon like sweet citrus along with some earth and chocolate um which i think offset some of that mineral component there um cigar was a a, a solid medium like right in the middle in terms of strength and body. Um, so it was a good cigar for me, again, as I'm starting to build my palate back up, um, going to a medium really, I found, helped me. And the construction was absolutely flawless on each each one of these I smoked. Um, good price cigar, $5.33. Nice. Um, it's worth a box split. I mean, again, good hmm. value, bestcigarprices.com. I check it out. Um uh, like I said, it's uh, same Espinosa quality. Uh, real good cigar. Nice. <clears throat> I smoked a Crown Heads Four Kicks Mule Kick from 2012. I saw, I saw this one. Got a couple of those kick around in my humidor. I brought some cigars in from home. It was in a bag with some random stuff, some cigars that I need to fix because uh, the wrappers were damaged. Um, <clears throat> but I pulled this one out and... I just couldn't believe how much this cigar has gotten better. I mean, it's just, <clears throat> the flavors are just amazing. I, I, I can't even begin to describe all the different flavors you get from this cigar, Will. I mean, it's just a flavor bomb the whole way through. Uh, you can't not pay attention to it. It's very smooth. It smokes awesome. I mean, it's just a, this cornucopia of flavor inside of this cigar. It's 
Medium body to start. It kicks up in strength still a little bit to medium full in the final third. It stays strong the whole way through. Um, just awesome. Awesome. Love this cigar. This is Oasis for me. Well, here's an interesting thing. I'll say this. That's the best crown head cigar I've had. Oh, by far. By far. It's the best cigar John Huber's done. Um, but the consensus, and I have not smoked this in a while. The cons- I gotta, cause you, they're very hard to get. They are. You got them. But the consensus is everyone who smoked it lately said this cigar lost its edge. Really? That's that, and again, I have not. I can't comment on it, but I've heard of. See, I didn't think it was very strong to come out with. I think he labeled it the Mule Kick, but <clears throat> I didn't think it was an overpowering cigar to come out with. But it hasn't. No. Lo- I, I don't think it's lost anything. See, that people are saying they, they felt it didn't age well. Now, this I've heard this from a few people. Interesting. But when that cigar came out, I thought it was everything that four kicks should have been. Yeah, I agree. Uh, this was a richer cigar. I thought it was, a, like I said, I would rate this as the best cigar that Crown Head has come out to date. But I haven't smoked it probably since 2013. So right. those are at least uh, maybe 14. But, yeah, those, are, those, are, those have got some age on them right now. <laughs> well, I think we've seen with some of these limited releases, like you love the Avo um, 2010. Is that the one you like? The 2010, right? Yep. And I see. I thought that cigar lost some with age. I'm not a huge fan, but you bought it all up and thought it was awesome. Like this is a cigar that I would rate Oasis, and I would buy up anything I could find in the cigar and smoke them because I think they're just fantastic. Yeah. Now the interesting thing <coughs> is um, the. I think he's made a few other blends similar to that Mule Kick blend in in some various releases, and um, I so. But I don't think that exact blend, he can get it back again for whatever right. reason. <laughs> well, that's too bad. It's too bad. Like I said, it was the best crown head cigar I've had. And I've been accused of being a crown head hater, which I'm not. But I, that was a very good cigar. I mean, back. when it came out, it was probably a box worthy easily. Right. No, I agree. <clears throat> back to you, Will. Okay. I, so I smoked a... Uh, this is a cigar we smoked on the show a few weeks ago, um, and I went back and smoked it. Um, I, I had it when I was in Vegas, and then I smoked one kind of on the recovery week. Uh, and it's uh, one of James Brown's cigars. Is that Black Work Studio NBK. Yeah. Um, which is uh, another Ecuadorian Habano Oscuro wrapper uh, over Nicaraguan binder and filler. This is that 6x46 box press Corona Gorda. That he came out with, um, and this is the I'll one Stogie Santa and I think we're smoking. Yeah, I think it was, and this is the one I think we smoked it when James was on the show. Yeah, when James oh. was on the show, I remember. Now, yeah, I, I smoked this when he was on the show. Yes. Now I liked it on the show, but I thought the second half got a little harsh. <clears throat> mm-hmm. um, did not not so anymore. Um, this cigar is really, it's really smoothed out nicely. Um, it's got some spice on this cigar on the retro hail. And you know when you're on the show, when I'm on the show, I'm not as diligent about retro hailing. Mm-hmm. But when I smoked this on my own and did the retro, this is a very sharp. It's it's a little bit of a potent retro hail. Uh, you'll feel it if you don't like spice through the nasal passages, then this is not going to be a cigar for you. Uh, but there's some other flavors in there that off- also offset some of that spice. But it's not spice. It's gonna. What I like about this is I don't like spice that kind of lingers on the tongue on a long finish. Mm-hmm. I'd rather have it through the, through the retro hail, and this is what this cigar delivers. Um, it, so it's a it's a full bodied cigar. You're gonna get a lot of body off that cigar, and you know, like I said, it's it's got a little bit more strength. So again, as I was kind of building back up, now this is a cigar that was more, I think, closer to medium to full in strength. Um, I enjoyed the cigar a lot. I probably moved this up from it was a fiver maybe when I smoked it on the show. It's now moved to a box split. So I think it's aging very nicely. Um, don't know if it will go to box worthy or not, but uh, time will tell is what I'll say. This, it's, it's definitely standing up to age, this cigar. Uh, over six weeks, uh, there's been a difference. Long-term age, we'll have to see. Mm. <clears throat> Excellent. All righty, what else? We, uh, I smoked something from uh, Herrera. Our friend Willie Herrera. This is a Herrera Esteli 
Tienda Exclusiva Riverside Cigar Exclusive by Drew Estate. Yep. Now, I, I thought this yeah. was wrong. Did they do a, an exclusive Herrera for Corona Cigars Lounge, too? Yeah, they did the box press. Okay, that was the box press. This is different. This one has a, a pigtail cap on it. Yeah. Like a, fan, like a fan pigtail cap. Yeah, and from what I understand, this is a completely different blend as well. Interesting. This is a great, easy smoke. Uh, nice, subtle flavors. you got to pay attention when you smoke this cigar. Um, it changes to uh, some wood notes, to some earth. Um, but it's a great smoke. I rated a box split. It's a, I, I define it as like an easy smoking cigar, right? Like the draw is effortless. The flavors are great. Um, it's a great offering from, uh, from Herrera. I have this one. They sent this one in, in, the, uh, in, the, in the kit, in the box. Yes. Sample box. So I still have to smoke this one. And this is the red-banded Herrera Esteli, right? It's got a red. Yes. Yes, I'm looking at it now. It's got a red band on it. Yeah, so I still have to smoke this one. <clears throat> it's good. I think you're going to like it, Will. I'm looking it, forward to that one, yeah. That's one I still haven't gotten to yet. It's a solid offering. It is a little different uh, than the Herrera, regular Herrera line. Um, I'd say it's a little, like, lighter, in my opinion. The flavor's a little, like, light and kind of crisp, whereas the regular Herrera line tends to be a little more earthy, a, li a little more richness to it. Yeah, there's a, that richness almost has, like, a vanilla component sometimes they get yeah. like that. Yeah, I agree. It does, yeah, the regular has a little bit of, little bit of sweetness. This one's more of, like, a woody, little bit of spicier note. Yeah. Back to you, Will. Um, I smoked... La Flor Dominicana's PCKFAM Collector's Edition 2015. Say that like 10 times. I know, huh? So the TCKFA is the cigar formerly known as, and the M is the Mysterio or Mysterioso. Oh, okay. Um. So the Mysterios are those Perfectos, those artesian style Perfectos yes. that um that they've had out for an, like for a few years, and then the Mysteriosos were those Barbara Pole ones that came out with. Um, <coughs> and then they had to change the name. They had to change the name. There was some trademark. Some trademark. Issue. Okay. They had a trademark issue, so I think they just said, "Let's call it the cigar formerly known as M." Mm -hmm. So. This is the, the collector's edition are, these, are, are the annual barber pole that they do around the Christmas time. Um, and they change up that barber pole every year. So the first year it was like a Connecticut broadleaf with a Connecticut shade around it. And then last year it was a Connecticut shade with a broadleaf twisted around it. This year it's a, um, it is a Sumatra Oscuro wrapper. With a Connecticut shade twisted around it, and and this is a very very unique barber pole. Is what I'm gonna say. This is that that Lido Gomez artesian mm -hmm. style. It's got um the the area by the cap is just um is almost like a ball tip on this cap, uh, and and the the barber pole is very tightly wound around the cap, and then it's kind of draped more over the actual cigar. Um, I've liked the collector's editions. This cigar was a powerhouse. Really? Um, I mean, this is definitely power-wise. This is quintessential La Florida Dominicana. Uh, there's a lot of strength with this cigar. Uh, so it, it, it's definitely going to come at you, and particularly in the second half. Um, I can, can, it wasn't from me being sick because I did smoke one of these in Vegas as well. Um, one more I had, but I had, I also had the cigar in the morning wow. too, which was not a morning smoke. No, so that's, that Sumatra wrapper is uh, a powerhouse. This wasn't the best burning cigar each time I smoked it. So it did have, um, I don't want to say it had Paul syndrome. It's just a cigar that had to be worked. You know, yep. when you have that barber pole shape with the, the barber pole with the perfecto shape. I don't think is, it's just it, more of a higher maintenance cigar. I gave this a fiver. It's not my favorite cigar of those collector's ones. I like the other two better, but I see a place for this cigar. And it, like I said, it, it delivers that quintessential powerhouse La Fleur smoke um, in this series, which I think it, you know is a place for it. So it's a fiver. Um, they come in boxes of five anyway. 
So right. if you're a LaFleur, if you're a LaFleur collector, you're probably going to want this cigar. Nice. Yeah. <clears throat> I had Paul syndrome with a Cohiba Lancero this week. One, Did, was that a Cuban Cohiba Lancero? Well, it was a Cuban Cohiba Lancero that Stogie Santa gifted to uh, me. How, how did you have it with Warner? I've had that cigar. Uh, and it tasted so it? good, I just couldn't press through it because it was plugged. But, I'm like, you know, ah. I smoked that, you know, I was very sad. Uh, I smoked that cigar in his garage. Uh, yeah. Wilma. Yes. And I was, you know, I, and, and I, I loved it. And Wilma was kind of guarding us uh, that night, you know. And, uh, Couldn't ask for a better guard dog. Great dog, yeah. So, yeah, uh, you know, I kind of was thinking about that um, that night, you know, because Stogie Santa gave me one of those, and we yeah. still loved it. Just for our listeners, Wilma has since passed. Yeah, very, yeah. Very sad. I, and I was actually sad, yeah. at Stogie Santa's house, and my son picked the lock to his shed because <laughs> he, well, he locked his keys in his shed because, you know, Stogie Santa – and his son, your son picked the lock? My son, yeah, he had his own, well, he kicked the door and it kind of opened. He had his own, like, hacking method. He's, like, my shadow when it comes to hacking. And he, yeah, I was teaching him how to pick locks. And then he kicked it and it popped open. He's like, oh, I got it open, Dad. I'm like, you're awesome, Stogie. dude. So, wait, Stogie Santa locked his keys in the shed. Yeah, that, I mean, which is just par for the course, right? How, how like, do you lock your keys in a shed? I, I, uh, I <laughs> yeah. But then, no, the kicker was we got in the shed, and the keys weren't in there. <laughs> so he doesn't know what he did with the keys. Ah. Okay, Santa lost a set of keys? So then, well, then he gave me the, the Lancero. It's kind of like, you know, thank you for, you know, helping me out with my shed situation. Right. And, which my, my kids, my boys, like, ate his entire refrigerator, so he didn't really have to do that. But, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. There's usually a lot of food in that refrigerator. You know, <laughs> yeah, so they, they had some serious talk. eating while they were there. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, yeah, and the Lancero was plugged. Whatever. I was, uh, <laughs> it tasted really, I, it, it, I just couldn't press through it, but it was, it was really good. Yeah, we gave it, we actually rated it that night in the garage, and I had, mm-hmm. we had it as a Chuck Norris that night. Mm. You were saying Chuck Norris wasn't quite Oasis, but yeah. I can see that. Yeah. <laughs> I can see that. Um I smoked the M Bombay Casera A size that you reviewed, I think, last week. Will I didn't review this one yet? Oh, you haven't. No, you I have them. You, I have one. You, I think I sent you another one now too. Yeah, I definitely have a bunch. I just um, couldn't. Get, I couldn't handle an A cigar just yet. Yeah, sorry, Mel. It's I, a I long. Just, it's a journey, man. It's a journey. journey. Is yeah. this like a nine by fifty-two? Nine and a half by fifty-two? Nine by forty-nine, I think. Nine by forty-nine. Yeah. Uh, it's a really big cigar. Um, but it smokes good for a big cigar. Um, you know, the flavors are there. It makes some change-ups. There's a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of earthiness to it. Um, it's a good cigar. I would call it a fiver. So you, would, you, you wouldn't quite have it at, with some of those other sizes that are in there? Some of those other sizes definitely rate higher, in my opinion. This one was definitely a fiver for me. Okay. Yeah. And again, I mean, for a big cigar, it, it smoked good. Um, you know, no construction or burn issues. You know, the flavor was there. But for me, I, I, know, I think this, this particular tobacco just, it, for me, does better than the other sizes. I can see that. And I've rated some Casero pretty high, so. Yeah, I could definitely see that. A 9 by 47. Yeah, it's a fun cigar to smoke. It is. Yep. It definitely has the fun factor. It's not as daunting as the 10 by 60, <coughs> certainly, which is the largest cigar I've ever smoked. <laughs> but, you know, we've hit some milestones here on the Stogie Geek Show, Will. We smoked the largest cigar we ever reviewed on the show, and we smoked the least expensive cigar we ever reviewed on the show in and the you, past couple and, weeks. And now you have this, I think in that package, you'll see there's a 10-pack of the smallest cigar that I smoked. Which was? The uh, Florida Silver. That little Florida Silver. Oh, yeah. I remember Gabriel was posting on social media with those. Yeah, so he sent us some 10-packs. Uh, <clears throat> I actually have a... A Nat Sherman, like tiny, tiny, tiny cigarillo. Like the ring gauge has got to be like 25. Wow. By four. Like it's tiny. Wow. So maybe that'll be the smallest cigar we've ever reviewed on the show. Yeah, we'll have to see We're that. We're just setting all new milestones here on the Stoey Geek Show. But you know that, that M. Bombay A comes in the can. That's a, so I, have not, I, I, I shouldn't say I saw the can at the show. It's a big can. 
a big I bet. thing. I bet. Yeah. Yeah, it definitely stands was, out. But yeah, that was one of the ones that they actually did put in the can. And, and you know, if you see that cigar, you should definitely buy one <clears throat> and try it, especially with the warm weather coming up. Um, that's good. The ten by sixty, I would reserve that for the brave. <laughs> that's a real. That's a four plus hour journey. Um, that that those are some of the bigger cigars I've smoked. You've had a lot of people ask where those cigars uh, are from, but I'll just mention Tobacco Haven in um, New Hampshire is the store to get that ten by sixty. That ten by sixty, interesting. Um, we have a prize pack to give away. We get the prize pack back up on the screen. This is a six pack of Pinot del Rio PDR, I should say, PDR cigars. Uh, and this is the Sun Grown and the Maduro. It's actually the, uh, the Habano and the Maduro. Is it the Habano? I thought it said Sun Grown on the wrapper. Well, I think it is Sun Grown Habano, yeah. Sun Grown Habano uh, yeah. and the Maduro. Uh, so you get three of each of those. Now, I, I did take the cellophane off of them because you, you just can't get a good picture with the cellophane on. I tried because I didn't want to take the cellophane off, but I had to take the cellophane off. So if some of the pigtail caps on those cigars fall off in transit, I apologize. It's not going to ruin the, the cigar. Um, but I, had, I, I wanted to capture a really nice image of those uh, cigars. Uh, beautiful cigars. Um, but the question for this week, email the answer to the show at stogeeks.com. We'll pick a winner at random who submits the correct answer to the question of, in the Debonair Ideal segment that we talked about this evening, I mentioned a Tatawahe tubo release that came in two different colors. Which two colors did that release come in? Email the answer to the show at stogiegeeks.com, and we'll pick a winner at random, and you'll win uh, some fabulous PDR cigars. Awesome. Well, I think that does it for this evening. As always, thank you, Will. Thanks, everyone, thank for listening all. and watching. And next week is Skip Martin from Roma Craft. Yep. Who's always got some interesting uh, cigars to talk about, so make sure you tune in for that next week, 830 p.m. Eastern Time on Thursdays all the way up until May 9th where May 9th we're going to be at 6.30 Eastern Time on Mondays is the new yep. time for the Stoey Geek Show. So make sure you uh, keep tabs on that. Thanks everyone for listening and watching. We'll see everyone next week on the Stoey Geek Show.